for him to kick it off after a controversial end of that last Saskatchewan drive. Horn just hammers this down once again over Robinson's head, a little backspin on it, but it once again goes through the end zone. Matt, you think this is a Jason Goss interception? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm I'm Richie Hall. You know, it's easier for our perspective. He's on the sidelines. We're up here getting all kinds of video replays and reviews, but I believe that, you know, the ball pops up in the air. Excellent job of Jason Goss relocating it, but I think he gets his right foot down right there, and he secures the football. Another angle shows us that, and, and, and to me, you know, Richie Hall, here's the, here's the angle that I think really proves it. We saw his right foot inbounds on the other angle, so we know that that foot's inbounds, and he's got the ball there. To me, that's interception. Edmonton initially had the ball, and the game should still be tied. Four. And in fairness to Coach Hall on the sidelines, he, he he doesn't have the angles that we do, and he doesn't have a monitor down there. But you know, it, we saw it in the Jamie Borum, a fake field goal, our fake uh, punt attempt, and you know the spot. You know, we thought that might, that might have been challenged, and certainly the interception in the end zone could have been challenged as well. timing by Ricky Ray in anticipation of Fred Stamps clearing the defenders coming all, all wrapped around him but Ray sees the open area and throws a beautiful ball into that area and and Fred Stamps can't come up with a relatively easy catch for being Ricky Ray now he's he's got defenders draped over him over the top and underneath but that ball is there and you, we, we usually see Fred Stamps come up with that ball Fontaine to punt. This is Richie Hall's first time on the sideline since he played. He was in the booth all those years as an assistant coach. And now the Eskimos will punt. The fake. No, Prefontaine should have a first down to the 35-yard line. How about that? And I don't think that was called. Uh, that looked like Prefontaine on his own to me. Uh, yeah, maybe so. Uh, he's got he's he's got um, some big uh, he's got some guts. Let's just put it that way. Um, He's got some big guts. Yeah, let's say that in order to uh, pull this down in this juncture of the football game and pick up the first down by half a yard. That was huge. Well, so that's the way the Eskimos released here. Well, that's all, that looks like it's all Noel Prefontaine. You're right, Gordon. I tell you what, he's got more, uh, more guts than I do in that situation. That's experience shining through for you. Chad Cornegay's terrific month of September continues. Yeah, it looked like more Maurice Mann's shoulder pad that broke that up. Uh, and the ball hits him right on his left shoulder pad, and Cornegay's just a little bit late, right there, Ooh, doink, right. right off the right off the left shoulder pad facing, and uh, Maurice Mann like to have that one back. He's up second and long. Listen to this crowd, Gord. An early movement. And that crowd might have caused Patrick Cabongo to move early, which will make it second and a whole lot longer into the win. You know, Marcus Adams, you know, is right over Patrick Cabongo here. For CJ. Yeah, he couldn't get it. It's like Mike Jeff here. Five yard the biggest offensive lineman in the league against one of the smallest defensive linemen in the league. And as he jumps offside, you get the pretty pretty good comparison of just the differential that we do have there. Cabongo 6'7. There he is on your left hand side. Adams is 5'10. He's right here. <laughs> Second and 15. Looks like to face that for 65 plays a game. Ray, lots of time. Has a man. Is incomplete. The Eskimos will be forced to punt. And Matt, six possessions here for Edmonton in the second half. Four punts, a missed field goal, and a lost fumble. 
and plenty of drop footballs. And you know, I'm not gonna. And I'm not. Yes, we know it's rainy, but these receivers have got they're professional athletes. They got to come up with these footballs and these catches. We got Milt Stegall. We've got Jock Climbing in the studio, and these guys are probably thinking the same thing. It's tough, yes, but you've got to change your your technique. You got to come up with that catch. And we saw Andy Fantuz on the other side of the football, making sure that he's securing the football. Everything receivers have neglected to do that in the second half. Sign winding kick and a pretty good one. Arms that touches and he gets buried by Mo Lloyd. The ball is loose. Flags are down. Now the Eskimos will argue that Armstead had touched the ball when Lloyd drilled him, but I think he was inside five yards. And so now tempers are boiling between Edmonton and Saskatchewan, who will play again next Saturday in Edmonton. We'll see when Jason touches the ball here and frees it and see if he breaks that plane. And obviously he does. He's about three yards away from him. You see Mo Lloyd beating, just got a beat Ooh. on him. That's a dangerous situation. That's why we have that five-yard rule in effect. Well, and I wonder if they won't tack on 15 yards for roughness on the end of it. We'll Very see what well the call is from referee Murray Clark. Edmonton, by the way, has won only twice in its last 11 visits here to Regina. But the Riders have a tough time in Edmonton. One win in their last 11 up there. So the officials are conferring as Armstead shakes it off. And no yards. Edmonton. That's a five yard penalty. Major foul unnecessary roughness also against Edmonton. 15 yards first down. So now it's a 20 yard penalty. No yards and the unnecessary roughness. And so the ball will go from the Saskatchewan 42 across midfield to the Edmonton 47. And that play and that penalty is, is, has been put into effect to, you know, for, for the safety of the returners because when the ball bounces, a lot of people are breaking on purpose the five yard barrier, only giving up five yards. But if you, if you, if you blatantly come after a returner like that with good intentions or bad intentions to hurt him, that's why they tack down the extra 15. Edmonton was flagged for 164 yards. Complete. That 164 yards, by the way, the most any team has been penalized in a game this year. And this ball's bad in the air, and it's like, uh, you know, uh, 500 pop up right here in the backyard. And, you know, it's 500 somebody's calling, and you, uh, you got. You got Williams, Lane Williams trying to get to the football, tripping over the receiver, doing everything he can to get his team football back, see if they can't come back here. Best field position for the Riders to start today. Second and ten. Here comes the rush. Durant swings, has a man. He's overthrown Rob Bag. As Bag was open for a moment, Goss and Richardson there on the tackle, on the coverage rather, and Saskatchewan will be forced to punt as Rod Davis unloaded late and is injured near the Edmonton sideline. So would you try a 54-yard field goal here for Luka Kongi, his longest, Luka Kongi's longest field goal of the year, 41 yards. And so Borum will come out and putt it. You want to try a 54-yarder, Matt? Not in this situation. You, you back him up. they got to go the distance for a field goal. Uh, long way into the win. Your defense has really been played, fired up, uh, exceptional football in the second half. And... Uh, Ricky Ray has cooled down somewhat here in the second half. Really not getting a lot of help from his receivers. And I think it's a smart move here by Coach Ken Miller. Put the defense on the field, back them up, play some field position here late in this game. Are we in for another heart-stopping Edmonton Eskimo finish? Three times in the last four weeks. Edmonton Eskimo games have been decided in the final minute of the fourth quarter. They beat Calgary in that wild finish in Edmonton, in Hamilton, a field goal with 54 seconds left. And last week, it was Copeland with a touchdown catch with 22 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, 1-5 for Edmonton. He's the guy I'd want in those situations. And I was given a choice the other night on Friday Night Football. We played a little game on the panel, and everybody got to choose who they wanted in that situation. And I chose 1-5, Ricky Ray. And uh, he's special in those situations because he just doesn't change, whether it's in the beginning of the game or at the end of the game. His level of play and, 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 and focus is the same. We'll see if he can get her done here tonight. Brad Robinson back to receive the punt from Borum. 
stands inside his own 50, and he'll take as much time as he can off the play clock before the ball is snapped. Four, end over end kick. Over the head of Robinson into the end zone, and this will be a huge point for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, but it won't. No yards oh. is called against Kitwana Jones, who yes. can't believe it. I'm just, I'm shaking my head here, Gord. One on, on Bradley Robinson's decision not to catch the football in the air, return it out, and not give up the single, forcing his offense potentially go the distance and put, have it score a touchdown. And then for the no yards call. By James Patrick. Well, it's Patrick and... In the end zone. It doesn't no matter who else. Yeah, right. If it's just one guy, it's the enough. Five-yard penalty applied from the 10-yard line. First down. So the Eskimos will scrimmage first down without giving up a point as the ball will be placed at their 15-yard line. And so Ricky Ray will try to recreate his first half magic with 3.10 to go. And the Eskimos trying to drive at least into field goal range for Noel Prefontaine. You watch the warm-up, Matt. What do you think the max is for Prefontaine? 40, 40 yards with these conditions because they've worsened. There's 42 without the rain. I say 40 with this rain in these conditions. On first down, Ray slings it. And again, it's dropped by the antenna receiver, Kamal Peterson. Another drop pass by Edmondson brings up the three-minute warning with the Riders leading by three. Not capable of playing an uninteresting game. You got that right, Gordon Miller. Good football. Second and ten for Ricky Ray from the 15. Director can't squeeze it. Kenny Davis there on the coverage, and Edmonton will have to punt. Yeah, this is solid defense. You know, this is a tough catch. Jamaica Rector, but Ricky Ray puts it the only spot it can be on the outside shoulder because Eddie Davis has got inside leverage on Rector, and, and Ray spots it where it needs to be. Rector's got a chance right here and can't come up with it. Boy, I tell you, this Edmonton receivers are really let down. Oh. The offense and their quarterback, Ricky Ray, here in the second half, particularly here in the fourth quarter, where we've seen a number of drops where Ricky Ray could be perfect on the night if his receivers could hang on to the football. There really hasn't been one that's been out of someone's reach. Low snap, but a low driving kick will punch nine iron. Drop down at the Edmonton 44-yard line, and Matt, the story of the second half has been an inability of Edmonton receivers to squeeze it. Exactly, and, 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 it's, been, and it's been frustrating because, you know, this, that's a catchable ball. Man, that's just another look at the same play, but it, this, is, this is sad because these, these balls are catchable. That was tough when Eddie Davis had tight coverage there. I'll give him that, but... Well, I'd, I'd be interested to hear what my colleagues, Jock and Milton and Studio, are thinking about that. I know the rain's playing a factor, but I'm not using that excuse, and I know receivers don't like to, and I know that they would like to have those opportunities back. Two and a half to go in the fourth quarter. This is West Cape. Bring it home! Side. And not much doing there. As he is stopped by Saskatchewan, Stevie Bags. Let's go down to Ray Morrison. Now we're back, okay? Rod Davis is back out on the field, but keep an eye on his left shoulder. The training staff was having a look at it. It might be a little bit tender, deeply bruised. They're saying Dario Romero has not been a part of this interior for a while either because of dehydration. He's already in his uh, civvies on the sidelines here. Gordon? Just breathe some air. You'll be hydrated in a hurry. Pea soup out there here in Saskatchewan on this Sunday afternoon. Second and long, Cates again. Mo Lloyd, big oh. tackle for a loss of five that will force Saskatchewan to punt with 2 one to go in the fourth quarter. Was it ever a big play by Mo Lloyd against his old teammates? Coming up big, tackle for loss. He's at the top of your screen there, coming free, finding, finding space, shoestring tackle on Wes Cates, basically forcing Saskatchewan out of a possible long field goal attempt 
making decision easy for head coach Ken Miller to punt the ball away. Robinson back to receive the punt. He may have been told to catch it this time. <laughs> You're a relentless Gordon Miller. With the touch of sarcasm, which is perfect. That's exactly what they're that's exactly what is being told to him on the sidelines. High snap. Borum gets it off the side of his foot. And not a great kick by Borum. It goes out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. That's a penalty. That is a penalty. You're That's right. right. Take it up. This is a good field position for Edmonton. Good pressure by Edmonton special teams there, forcing Jamie Borum to redirect his punt and the angle of his punt coming up short. Only 28 yards on the punt. In the air, the ball was punted out before the 20 yard line. It's going to be moved up. The usual kick out of bounds by Saskatchewan. That penalty is declined. First down, Edmonton. Eskimos decline the penalty. They like the field position they're getting, and they like the time on the clock. 1.37 to go. Matt, seven possessions for Edmonton in the second half. Five punts, a missed field goal, and a turnover. Shades of last week, it happened against Calgary. That's self-induced, though, because a lot of those situations are punch because balls are being put on the ground by the Edmonton receivers. Lack of execution. For an Edmonton first down, it's a gain of 16 yards. Fred said, I'm not using my hands on this one. I'm going to go ahead and cradle it. And he looked it into his gut, like, much like he would on a punt return. You see him come across the middle, use his stomach and his shoulder pads and his arms as a blocker, and secures the football. And he's out of bounds at the 42. They'll mark that as a gain of four, but the clock will stop with 1.20 to go. Ricky Ray standing tall in that pocket with pressure collapsing down on him, finding Fred Stamps on the boundary, stopped the clock. Showing the poise that we've seen throughout the years in his tremendous football career. And this is the guy I want in this situation, the game on the line, to drive it for the potential winning this tying score is Ricky Ray. Temperatures drop to about 10 degrees Celsius. The wind is howling. Ray. Got him. Top. He's got it. Got him. Open. And look at Maurice Mann. Wide open. Touchdown Edmonton. Count it, Gordon Miller. Count it. Maurice Mann. Squeezes that. It's a 68-yard pass and run touchdown that stuns the fans here in Regina again. Uh, this is crazy good right here. Here he is right here. It's a little stop and go. Ricky Ray gives him a little pump. Here's a little head. It's all he had to do. Just a little shoulder fake, and Morgan jumped on it. Oh. Ball's lifted. Ricky Ray put it on money, and man made sure he didn't put this one on the turf this time. Took it the distance. Omar Morgan, the hero with the fumble recovery earlier, is burned for a touchdown by Maurice Mann. And the Eskimos, with a point after, have a chance to add to their lead. Ray Fontaine puts it through. Fourth touchdown catch of the year for Maurice Mann, and it is now a four-point lead for Edmonton. Wow. Wow is right, Court Miller. This, this, this is what football is supposed to be about right here. When these two teams get together, something good is going to happen. Saskatchewan out. The young Darren Durant making his 15th start. Going to show his poise and his progress at this point, see if he can't bring his football team back. That's unbelievable. 